we met when we were both graduate students at the University of Buffalo. And so this would have been around 1994, I think. Um, she came from Argentina to study piano in Buffalo, and I was already a composition and, and, and working on a master's in piano as well. The first thing we did was play on my master's recital, played a few pieces together, really enjoyed working together, and then we played on her master's recital. And then a bunch of composers started writing pieces for us, and very early on we started this project with Nan Caro's music. Um, because we were looking for more forehand repertoire to play, pieces that were not uh, necessarily pedagogical or um, transcriptions, but pieces you know that would really work for piano forehands, uh, not for two pianos. And uh, though these are transcriptions from the original pieces for player piano, we um, thought that was quite an original project and something that was very challenging for us when we first started. The pieces are so rhythmically complex. Um, with several different speeds of music going on at the same time, that when we started, really it was a, it was a huge challenge to play a piece that was sort of three against four against five. Um, but after working for many years on these transcriptions and contemporary other contemporary pieces, um, I think we've we developed a rhythmic technique. Um, and so these kinds of pieces aren't so difficult for us anymore, but it's really took many years of playing together. And once we survived playing these pieces that were, you know, originally for mechanical piano, um, once we, we, we survived that, we figured, oh, we, 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 can, we can do this, we can really be a duo. And so, um, so we've been playing together ever since. Oh, wow. When I started playing the piano, uh, I come from a musical family. My father's a percussionist, my mother's a violist. Three of my four grandparents played the piano at some level. So, um, so I say I went into the family business. <laughs> um, and so I started playing the piano when I was four, and then when I was maybe in third or fourth grade, I started playing the flute as well. Oh. Played the flute up until through college, into college. And then I started composing really at the beginning of college, and then it had to be a choice between composing and flute. Piano mm -hmm. was a, the steady one, but, um, but I enjoyed the challenge of, of composing so much that I, um, that I flute faded to the background, and, mm -hmm. and composition certainly came to the foreground. Her father was a singer and a piano tuner, and uh, was very involved with music, and so she. Um, she got involved with piano. She started a little later. I think she was around 10 when she started piano, but she loved it and she went through a whole series of, of conservatories and, you know, real strict training um, as a pianist. And when she came to Buffalo for graduate school, she was working on a master's in piano, but she also got very interested in studying music from a scholarly point of view. And so she um, also received her doctorate in musicology. Mm. Um, while she was in Buffalo, so she um, so she has the scholarly side and the performance side, and I have the compositional side and the um, and the performance. So I think we we uh, sometimes have interesting discussions about what it is we're playing and how to interpret it based on on these different experiences we have. We certainly have slightly different preferences, but we meet in the middle on a lot of, on a lot of common repertoire. And we do compromise. Having a chamber music group is all about compromise and you know, finding ways to work together and to challenge each other and to, to um, travel together and all these mm -hmm. you know, um, challenges. And, and so once you find somebody who you can really work with, um, it's important to you know, stick to that. So despite the fact that we live in different countries, she lives in Switzerland and I live here. Um, we have uh, found a way to keep working together and playing concerts and recording, which has been wonderful. Well, it takes a little bit of extra planning. We plan our repertoire pretty far in advance so that we know what we're going to be playing, how much time we need in order to prepare any new pieces, or how much time we need to prepare well pieces that we've done before because some of the, of the music is, is challenging and you know we have to always keep rehearsing it. So, so we know what we can do well and, mm -hmm. and try not to exceed that. We've thought about 
kind of rehearsed by Skype, but it's never really worked out. <laughs> a lot of the music we're playing in the concert uh, on the second is um, some of its music we played before and some of its music we recently recorded. We may transition now into, into the music of Kurtag, is a composer whose music we first played together on Elena's master's recital, I remember that clearly. And Kurtag has many books of what he calls games, and these games were started out as pieces for children to approach the piano, but to approach the piano in, in original ways, in, in the ways that children want to play the piano, um, which is not necessarily with all five fingers, right? They might rather play with their fists. So he uses different kinds of extended techniques, what we call extended techniques, which is really just ways that kids want to play the piano. Um, and so he started writing these pedagogical pieces called games um, to introduce children to the piano and to the world of contemporary music through the piano. He's written now eight books of Jan Kok, they're called in, in Hungarian. It's become a, a huge collection of music for solo piano, piano for hands, and two pianos. And the pieces get harder and harder, um, and there are two books now dedicated to piano duo of those eight. And Kurtag himself plays in piano duo with his wife, and they have a very wonderful, intimate approach to the piano that comes so much out of their own relationship. And so they're, they're wonderfully um, inspired pieces and very personal pieces. Many of them are, are homages to people he knew, composers, other composers, friends, teachers, family. Um, and so there are these wonderful uh, pieces that that capture the essence of, of something else, of a, of, a, of a person or of their music. He also plays very much with the, the, the medium itself of piano four hands and two pianos, so there's a lot of wonderful choreography that's connected. Um, one of the pieces uh, called Beating is really an argument between <laughs> these two people sitting side by side. Um, some of the pieces are very uncoordinated. The person at the top does one thing, the person at the bottom does their own thing. Uh, and yet it creates a beautiful sound world together. They're wonderful, wonderful pieces, pieces we've been playing for many years and, and recently recorded the complete forehand pieces of Kurtag's. So it's all of these original game pieces, but he, then he also has spent a lot of time doing transcriptions, pieces from early music, from, from uh, Machaut and Frescobaldi and Purcell, and then many pieces of Bach's uh, chorales that he's arranged and they're quite true to the original, um, but he, as always, he adds a little bit, um, a little bit of his own coloring or uh, viewpoint on these arrangements. And so, on the program on, on April second, we'll be playing a mix of original pieces from the Yadakok series, mixed with some of these arrangements of early music. So, uh, you hear both contemporary sounds and then. Uh, uh, familiar sounds, but, but uh, interconnected in various ways. So Elena's uh, dissertation was written on the music of Conlon Nancaro, and um, before she moved to Basel, she found that uh, when, when Nancaro died, all of his um, music, scores, player pianos, equipment, anything that was related to music from his studio, um, went to these incredible archives in Switzerland, the Paul Zacher archives. And so when she was working on her dissertation and living in England, she went to Basel to look at some of the player piano rules uh, that she wanted to study. Little did she know that, that she'd end up moving to Basel a, a year or so later, and uh, she's been living there ever since. She has continued to be in touch with the people of the Zacher archives, and, which has been a, an incredible resource for us because um, she has a close relationship with the director of the archives, and when he finds something new um, that he thinks she might be interested in, he just calls her up and says, hey. So he found recently this series of nine pieces by Nan Carroll, early solo piano pieces, um, that as far as we know have never been performed, and they are going to be premiered here on the Music of the Edge concert on April 2nd, which is very exciting. piece abstracted art is very influenced by Art Tatum. I was very interested in listening to Art Tatum, incredible jazz pianist, how he approached the piano, and um, I took a lot of notes of 
kind of descriptive notes of things that he did at the piano, you know, fast scale, ending with a ping, and things like that. <laughs> and I wrote all these things down, put it away, came back to this list of descriptions, and used those as the kind of musical material uh, to base the piece on, so that it doesn't sound, sound really like Art Tatum, though there certainly is a jazz influence, um, but captures something of his approach to the instrument. So it's a kind of very similar to the Kurtag, this is part of why we put it on the program, is that it's similar to Kurtag in his homage pieces. It pays tribute to another musician without using any direct quotation. Um, and so those are those two pieces of strength that are one and two are, are the ones that we'll do. And everything on the program relates to Kurtag in different ways. Um, my music is also very influenced by Nan Caro. Um, Nan Caro was very close friends with Georgi Ligeti, and Ligeti was a classmate of, Nan of Kurtag's in Hungary, uh, and very close friends all their lives. So, um, so there are these connections um, between the different composers who will be represented on the program. So we're really excited to come back to Pittsburgh and to play this program, and, and uh, I, I think it'll be an enjoyable show. It'll be a lot of short pieces, so they'll be really... Uh, if you don't like any one thing, it'll change in about two minutes and there'll be something else to listen to. So I think it'll be um, quite a, a collection of interesting pieces for people to listen to.